Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Bacadis and Maury Medea at Yahoo. Want to say Shabbat Shalom to you all. Pray all is well. And please let me know if you can hear me loud and clear. We give a few minutes space for those that are logging on to the live stream. Toda more Kanan for the loud and clear. I guess the investment paid off. Because on last week, the other week, there was some loud lawnmower noise. And the mic did not even pick it up. So it was a good investment. Now, Amana... Shabbat Shalom to you. And everybody seems to be coming on, so we are so thankful for this blessed Shabbat. Today we're going to be going uh, on the light side because we want everyone to go into the feast day tomorrow. You should already be there since we're Shabbat in Shabbat, but I want to ensure you go into the feast day uh, with a glad and rejoicing spirit, Ruach. All righty, let's see, where are we at? Oh, we're at the top of the... We at one o'clock. So Shabbat Shalom, Miss Baka. We're going to get ready and get started into our feast days prophetic. That's what we're going to call it today. We're just going to have a little talk and go over some things and then discuss how you can get the most out of this feast day. As we pray, Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohinu Malach HaAlam. Father, we're here on your Shabbat day and we'll be going into your feast day of Shavuot soon. And as we're transitioning, Father, we're praying that you would help us to see and help us to identify with the feast day and with the cycles that you have ordained so that we can have a better understanding of your cycles and what you require. So I pray, Father, that you would open our hearts and minds, give us what we need, give us memory, recall, understanding, wisdom, all the things that are necessary for us to comprehend your word. And then we will put it in action because you can't put it in action for us. That is up to us. You're speaking to us and tell us to not only be hearers of the word, but doers also. So cause our minds to be in a state where what's in us will flow out to do your word. We know you can't, you won't force us because this is free will. So take that which we have, Father. And we're, we're asking, as we've been talking about the purging and the fire, so that we can bring you something that is miraculous in your sight, that will be a sweet savor unto you, that you will smile and say, that's my child. Thank you, Father, for just helping us to arrive to this point. And we give you praise, honor, and esteem for what you shall speak to us today. In the name of Shiach Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah, Amen. So, what we have is a 
we're right. If if you look here, we got three feast days. Three feast days, and right in the mil middle is Shavuot. So you have to see where you're at. We're we're midway. Now, what I want you to do is go back and gauge. On a scale of 1 to 10, where would you rank yourself as far as maximizing the feast day? The feast days we've had so far from 1 to 10. From 1, I didn't maximize at all. I just fell off the cliff. I didn't do anything. Or 10, I made it to the mountaintop. It was one of the best feast days I ever had. You don't have to do that in the comments or anything, but we're just doing an evaluation assessment of what you thought. You know, you might have been at a five, you know, or you might have been at a seven. So what could you do that's within your power to make the feast days? joyous to where you're meeting his requirements and you feel that it was well pleasing what your actions and what you did and your what state of ruach you were in were very pleasing to him based on what you see in the word so now we want to Bridge over because we got a feast day coming tomorrow. And we want to see if we can meet, reach that mountaintop. We can make it a joyous occasion, fellowship, rejoicing, talk of him. Um, this is, you know, this is just an assessment. So. But I do want to talk about some other things. And we're going to come back to the feast days <clears throat> here in a minute. But I do want to talk about some other things. Because as these cycles continue, there's a cycle going on in the earth. And there are things that you can see that are happening right before your eyes. It's like it's, like it's playing out. And... You can see it. So this is the prophetic talk because we're midway. And remember what I want you to remember about each of the feast days that we're doing. Even though you're bringing the same harvest every year. Every year the harvest has a newness. The offering has a newness because it is a new offering. It is an offering that you have not given before, you have not produced before, and you're producing it now, so you're presenting it. You're not going back in the cupboards and presenting what you had last year. This is what you're getting out of the field this year that you planted. So if you planted little, you're reaping little. If you didn't do the labor that's required in the field to ensure that you had good ground, then guess what? You're not going to produce much, much and you're not going to have much to present. So the presenting part, we had the last phase of the harvest is presenting to him what he requires. But if you didn't do all the legwork in the back when the planting season started and did everything coming forward, then you don't have a harvest. So and, and this is what I'm been trying to tell you when I started the these series that pertain to feast days. We have to take advantage of the time because 
you right on Shavuot, you know, you can't plant today and expect the harvest to reap tomorrow. That's that's not how this works. You've been planting during the planting season and you've been nurturing, you've been doing what you're supposed to do, you've harvested, now you've prepared the harvest for presentation. So let me let me give you a, a real live uh example. Okay. You can't all of a sudden now that the feast days is upon us come to the feast day trying to give peace or shalom when up until now all you've been cultivating and growing has been chaos has been confusion has been contention has been anger has been hate has been has been strife has been all those things that's what you've been cultivating all the way up to the feast day and now we get to Shavuot and you want to come prevent, uh, present an offering of Shalom. Doesn't work like that. You should have been cultivating, planting Shalom, peace, cultivating peace, helping peace grow in your life. Then when harvest time comes, you yielded peace. And then when the offering gets here, because, you know, we they're all kind of offerings that we present during a feast day. So I'm just using this as a spirit as a spiritual example. Now, because you did all of that, you can offer peace and shalom. And it's a true fruit. It's not a bad fruit. It was it's not mixed with anything. So this is this is what I'm, you know, because remember, three times a year, the men were supposed to present themselves before Yahuwah, representing their households. So a lot of people get it misconstrued, you know, you, you see them, at, they won't even speak to you when you come to Shabbat. They barely lift a hand. Then because it's a feast day. You know, they, they want to grab you and roll around on the floor and, and toss you around. But I can tell that that's, that's not a true fruit because what you've been cultivating and helping to grow all these other cycles of Shabbat or when I've seen you, barely would speak. So... I hope you catch where I'm going with this. This is what we want people to understand. This is not just a one day affair, a feast day. It's not a one day affair. This is, there's, there's activities and things you're doing leading up to this wonderful day. And I'm hoping you have a great Feast day, Shavuot. But I'm just trying to help you maximize it. And the only way I can do that is to be real with you. Real in, you know, what people do and how they act. And, you know, that's the best I can do is just be real. And that's prophetic because when you're giving... A message from Elohim, it has to be real. It has to originate with him. So, just on side note, I talked about the cycle in the world. Their agenda is continuing to move forward. Okay? Even though the, uh, we'll say virus numbers are still high, you don't hear much about it. It's like they're in, they're in another phase that they're focusing on. 
Some phases are still coming, but all of this deals with the, the agenda to depopulate the earth because some man decided that there are too many people in the earth. And it actually goes flat out against what the Father has commanded us to do, which is be fruitful and multiply. Okay, and he even told us in Deuteronomy 28 that he would bless the fruit of our womb. So to cause something to depopulate, you know, they're attacking it from both angles. They're causing people to die and they're causing people not to be born. Okay, and they're going to be adding to the agenda. Hunger. You're going to, see, you're going to and this is worldwide. And I'm sure many of you have seen where the farmers were complaining because the government wouldn't subsidize them unless they destroyed their crops. You, you're going to start to see a shortage, especially in the um, in the bigger countries, shortage of food. And I was just reading today where, see, they're, they're very strategic in what they do. A farmer was saying, saying, I'm going to plant wheat so I can capitalize on the wheat shortage from Ukraine and Russia. But guess what? The farmer, he, found, he couldn't capitalize on it because it's been raining so much that his wheat crop just simply would not grow. Isn't that very interesting? Notice the shootings have picked back up. And the shootings, uh, you, you're going to see more and more of those. And I was talking to one of the mores and I was saying, that, did you ask him, did you see where they showed how much the ammo and weapons was this 18-year-old had? And he had a new truck. But he doesn't have any hits on his credit. He doesn't have a job, but he got all that stuff. Makes you want to go, hmm. So all this stuff is not by chance. It's being orchestrated. Okay, then inflation. Your money's worth less. Do you really think that there's a, a shortage of gas, oil, all that stuff. No, it's not a shortage. It's, a, it's only shortage by design because of what the agenda is promoting. So your gas price is going up, your food is going up, everything is going up. There's going to, at, at some point, this is going to hit the fan. Then there's power outages. Okay, Some, sometimes we don't think about this when I, I'm speaking specifically of the U.S. here in this scenario where since they haven't had any uh, rainfall on the West Coast, they're saying there's not enough, po not enough water to power uh, for the dams to produce electricity. So we, we might have rolling power outages. All this stuff by design. And all the power outages, about two-thirds of the country, everything is going west. So, like I said before, there are going to be shortages everywhere. And it just so happens, our Mr. Gates, remember when it was uh, advertised or told how much farmland he was buying up. That wasn't just by chance. He wasn't just buying farmland to buy farmland. It's almost like you can follow what he's doing and predict what's coming. 
So he bought up farm names. What are we getting now? Food shortages. What were some of his best investments? He said it was in vaccines. He talked about how much money. This is He said it, not me. You can go find the videos. How much money he's made just investing in vaccines. But guess what his last investment was? Baby formula. Didn't we just have a baby formula shortage here in the U.S.? Can't speak for other countries, but I can speak for here. People were putting out videos. You know, if you have baby formula, I'll pay you to send it to me. So you follow that track and, and you can almost see what's coming next. And all of this stuff is going to be accelerated. It's like they've put their agenda in, in motion. So we have to be as wise as serpents, harmless as doves. We have to continually seek Yahuwah for the right paths to take. Because I had a dream the other night. And in that dream, sometimes we pick things based on what we love instead of what will endure. And I won't go into the the ins and outs of the dream, but that's basically the the gist of the dream. So just just an, as an example, you love sweets. But what makes better sense for you health-wise, going to the gym. That makes the sense for your overall health. So we have to pick, not based on what we love and how we define love, but we have to pick what's going to be best for us in the long run in that scenario. And then you're going to see, you're going to see people not listen. I had a dream last night where I had to tell someone that they were in error. The person did not want to listen. They, put, they got puffed up. Then they tried to walk past me like they were going to hit me, but they never hit me. But in the dream, you could just tell it's a whole different spirit operating. Like a spirit of rebellion. Where even if you tell them what's right, they're not going to listen. Even if you show them what's right they're not going to receive it. So you have got to make sure that you got your life at a place that you're walking in obedience, that when you when the Father speaks, you are hearing and you'll be able to move. And you'll be able to hear him through other people. Because now's the time coming where this portion of our navigation, we got to be able to see that pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night to be able to navigate where he takes us and where he wants us to be and where he wants us to go. Now, I just wanted to go over just a few things. And as I was talking at first, the main part of the feast days is a harvest. And presenting that harvest and using that harvest for his esteem. So I wanted to read a couple of things out of the Brit Hadashah about fruit that I hope will 
be a witness to what scripture has said. Okay, why did I say it like that? Because remember, scripture is what's in the Tanakh or the Old Testament. The Brit Hadashah is a witness to what was written. Because they didn't use Matthew through Revelations. It wasn't written then. They used the Tanakh or the Old Testament. That was their scripture. So that's why I say this is a witness to scripture. So listen to this. Ephesians 5 verse 8. For you were once dark, for you were once darkness, but now you are Light in the master. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is pleasing to the master. Okay, so it all pointing back to the word that made flesh. That followed Torah. That adhered to the instructions. Philippians chapter one, verse nine. And this I pray that your love might extend more and more in knowledge and all discernment for you to examine the matters that differ in order to be sincere and not stumbling until the day of Messiah being filled with. So your container, the fruit of righteousness through Yahusha. Messiah to the esteem and praise of the Father. Now, I want you to think about this because this is this is a fruit. And, and, and I wonder, have you cultivated and harvest, harvested any of this lately? I'm not talking about what you put in the storehouse. I'm talking about this is this is an ongoing harvest during harvest season. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gem, uh, excuse me, goodness, trustworthiness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no Torah. So there's nothing pretty. Torah was based on all of this stuff. And those who are of Messiah are impaled, have impaled the flesh with his passions and his desires. So again, let's produce a harvest. And there's always work to do. There's always growing you can do. When was the last time you pulled some weeds in your garden? When was the last time you checked the leaves to make sure that the bug's not eating your leaves up? Because you need the leaves, the shoots, and all, depending on what type of crop it is, for your crop to be effective. Did you plant on good ground? Or did you just throw the seed in wherever it lands and lands and you hope a harvest come forth? So we've got much to do. We're going to have a joyous Shavuot. I want you to strive to make sure that Shavuot, when it comes in, that you exceed. Now, remember some of the characteristics of Shavuot. It was, even though they had offerings, when you go back to when they first received, this is, this is when they first received the word. And they said, I do. When you go to Acts, the second chapter, it says, when the day of Shavuot, or Pentecost, some translations will say, was fully come, they were all in one place on one accord. Then there came a rushing mighty wind. That was the Ruach HaKadosh. Ruach HaKadosh came rushing in. The word, the seed. 
You got to hide that seed so it can grow in you and flourish. So we still got Young Tarua, Young Kapoor, and Sukkot after Shavuot tomorrow. So my prayer is that you will have a joyous feast day and make the Father proud. So let us pray. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohim Malik HaLam. Father, we ask for your guidance because our choices, the roads we've taken haven't always been correct. And we want to make sure, Father, that we're on the right path, that we're bringing forth the right thing and in the right time and in the right spirit, Ruach. So we're asking you to guide us, give us direction, help us chart that course so that this feast day, Shavuot, as it comes in, and the remainder of the feast days in this year's cycle would be a joy for us, but most of all, be well-pleasing to you. Send correction if we need it. Send instruction. Send rebuke. Send chastisement. Send encouragement. Whatever's needed to help us reach that next level, send it. And help us to see it when you send it. Because sometimes, Father, when you send things, we attribute it to the enemy when it's not the enemy, it's you trying to push us a certain direction. So give us the discernment that we need that we'll be able to discern between good and evil, between righteous and unrighteous, between set apart and unset apart. Father, we praise you, we thank you, because we know if we're following you, our pillar of cloud by day, our pillar of fire by night, we will never go wrong. Because even if you lead us into a valley, it was to get us to the mountaintop. Father, we esteem you highly. There's none like you. We praise you and we exalt your name this day. In the name of Yahusha HaMashiach, Hallel to Yahuwah, Amin. <laughs> All right, see, that was very simple, easy. We can, we can go on, we can have some joy, finish out the Shabbat, and then be ready for Shavuot. All right, Ms. McCart, now if you, I still have bookmarkers. Uh, if you filled out a request and you haven't heard from me, send me an email, info at hebrewfoundation.org. Hebrew Passover story, Passover will be here before you know it. So, hey, let's get our children, let's train them, let's teach them so that they can learn this at an early age and it be instilled in them. All right, Ms. McCobb, if you like to support, first area of support is prayers. And But if you would like to support us through your donations, you can. These are the paces. There's online donations, Cash App, and PayPal. And once again, I am glad for having you on the stream today. We'll be back in our um, lessons in two weeks. Tomorrow, make sure you enjoy yourself, enjoy your gathering, enjoy your family uh, for Shavuot. And we just look forward to having a joyous time. 
All right, this is Maureen Medea Yahoo saying unto you, Shabbat Shalom. Let's make this, what? The best Shabbat ever. Shabbat Shalom, Ms. McCaffrey.